so good hello good morning to everyone good morning good morning sir good morning so i love you for your enrollment number शिल्पा राइट योर एनरोलमेंट नंबर इन द मैसेज बॉक्स Okay, so we'll start uh, discuss today 
about the block four of the thermal uh, and statistical mechanics. The block four. That is the quantum uh, 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 statistics. In block three, we learn about the classical statistics, which was uh, basic, uh, uh, basically given by the Maxwell and Boltzmann. And before going to learn or discuss about the quantum statistics, we have some idea or basic concept about the statical mechanics and that is why we learn some basic terminology here in the quantum statistics. Now see here the probability that you have already learned at a plus two level, probability of permutation, computation, uh, combination uh, and uh, how the, the probability can be taken together and so on. Now see, suppose that an event E can occur with n possible outcomes. You have an event and that event can occur n possible outcomes and which are mutually exclusive and equally likely. Mutually exclusive means when one event occurs, it prevents the happening of the other. And the possibility of all events are same, equal likely. So let n of these outcomes be favorable to the event. Then out of n possible outcomes, n favors, small n. So capital N shows capital N shows are you able to uh, see the screen clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Small n is the favorable. Capital N is the possible. Then the probability of occurring the event E equal to small n by capital N. So, how can describe probability of not occurring the event, then if n is favorable, small n is favorable, total outcome is capital N, then not, not favoring is n minus n. So the probability of event not occurring n minus n by n, that is 1 minus n by n or 1 minus p. That means we can say, the total probability is 1, 100%. Then probability of occurring the event and probability of not occurring the event, that if we add them, that will give you 100% probability or 1. Now, compound probability, that means two events happening together. In that case, the probability of two events, that is two events are E1 and E2, they are not related to each other and the uh, two, if two events happening together, then probability of, we can say this probability as the compound probability and the probability compound probability is PE1 into p e2 that means probability of e1 multiplied with 
probability of E2. So you have to uh, you have to found determine them separately. Uh, what is probability of E1 and what is probability of E2? Multiply them to get the compound probability if the two events are happening together. <laughs> Similarly, you have also learned about the permutation and combination in the plus two level. Uh, to fresh your this memories, uh, I just uh, discuss here what do you mean by the permutation. So, a permutation is an arrangement of dis a distinguish uh, distinguishable objects chosen from a group in a definite order. Suppose you have three objects A, B, C and you want to take two of them together then what are the possibilities you can take a b also b a a c c a b c c b now see the order is not important here you have three uh, 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 suppose uh, objects and you want to arrange them in uh, two in numbers so you have to choose any two any two so order is not important here and the permutation of n objects taken r at a time i mean go n p r that is equal to n factorial by n minus r factorial, right? But in combination, the order is important. Now see, so arrangement of distinguishable objects out of a group without regards to the order of selection. Now see, so if you, if you consider the order, now see A, B and B, A. They are same, they are not different combination. They are, they are not different combination. A, B, B, A, they are the same combination. So, in the combination case, and the, that, that means number of combination of R objects chosen out of N. You have total number of objects N and you combine in R objects out of N. And we write n c r equal to n factorial by n minus r factorial by r factorial. Okay. So you you have a, a b c, and you want to only to take two together. Then in that case, you have only up three ups will be available. That means we can write three c two. Then 3 factorial by 3 minus 2, that means 1 factorial into 2 factorial. Okay. So that is equal to 3. 3 factorial means 3 up to you have to multiply to start from 3 and end with 1. Go on multiplying 3 into 2 into 1. Divided by 2 factorial, 2 factorial is 2 into so a cancelled that is 3 now see if you have a b c three uh, objects and you want to arrange them in uh, uh, to two in order tell uh, wh what are the possibilities a b b a a c c a b c c b it in case of combination a b or b a only one is allowed <laughs> because these two are same no not different combination so we have only options a b a c b c so three this is what combination says now the probability distribution of a random variable x okay so you have so many random variables their probability distribution satisfy this condition the zero less than equal to function of x i less than equal to 1 and 
sum over 1 to n fxi equal to 1. This is called normalization condition. And if your distribution is continuous, in that case, the summation is changed to the integration a to b fx dx equal to 1. So these two conditions have to be satisfied in case for the probability distribution of random variables. Now see, it's very important is phase space to know. Now see, in case of one dimensional motion, one dimensional motion means a particle moving along a straight line any axis so one dimensional means it's only one coordinate will change so when one coordinate will change when a particle will move along a axis along an axis <laughs> you take suppose particle is moving in along x axis its y coordinate z coordinate are zero only x coordinate will change that is called one dimensional motion or can say in a straight line so in that case the state of the particle at any instant that is specified by its position x and velocity dx by dt how how it is moving and if you know the velocity, you know also momentum. So, we can say its position and momentum. So, the state of the particle in case of one dimensional motion, you can say along x axis is determined by x and its momentum px. So, if you want to develop a coordinate system with one axis as x and another axis px then you can describe the state of the system by the points by putting points on this uh, co coordinate system okay that coordinate system is called or the space defined by the po co coordinate position and momentum this is known as phase space. So for one dimensional motion, we have two code phase space coordinate. One is x, another is px, or you can take y, py, or z, pz. So any pair you can take. So the state of the system, suppose, state of system means what is its position what is its momentum so as time lapses the position and the momentum changes so you get so many points on the x and p x diagram so every point on this phase space is called a phase point so we take a cra graph here, so, so the phase space diagram here you see, here x and px, this whole thing is called phase space diagram and see p is a point which, uh, which represents the state system at particular instant because if the body is motion, if the particle is motion, then its position and momentum may change or position will change. So, if the position will change, suppose momentum remains constant and position remains same. So, in that case, this point will move along the line parallel to x axis because momentum is not changing. So, when momentum is not changing, only position changing, the, 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 the graph will be or trajectory will be a straight line parallel to the position axis. Okay, and this trajectory is as phase path. So now, if you, were, you consider a three-dimensional motion, that means a particle moving in space. So, for particle moving in space, we have 
थ्री पोजिशन कोडिनेट एक्स वाई जेड एंड थ्री मोमेंटम कोडिनेट पी एक्स पी वाई पी जेड ओके सो द स्टेट ऑफ द सिस्टम इन द स्टेट ऑफ ए पार्टिकल इन वाइल मूविंग इन ए स्पेस दैट नीड्स सिक्स डी फेज स्पेस सिक्स डायमेंशनल फेज स्पेस विच ए एक्स वाई जेड थ्री पी एक्स पी वाई पी जेड थ्री सो दिस इज सिक्स डी फेज स्पेस एंड इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड म्यू स्पेस and if we consider here volume element volume element how you take now to take the volume element you have to take small element of length or you say change in different coordinate like if you consider simple volume that means del x del y del z you know so suppose it is a cuboid the its it cuboid has three uh, lengths One is along x, one another along y, another along z. Suppose it is del x, del y, del z give you volume. Similarly, in this phase space, you can uh, you can you can similarly you can extend this idea to a six-dimensional phase space, and we can write the volume element del h as del x, del y, del z. is a change in x y z similarly change in because all the coordinate we have chose del p x del p y del p z this is called mu space volume element now if you take now see if you take here in in you generalize the coordinate system you write generally position coordinate is defined by q and momentum coordinate by p here then del q del p we can write the volume element if we uh, divide the whole uh, uh, mu space volume in small elements like small volume cells then we can we can we can have many, a large number of of the cells then we define a macro state so what is macro state when phase points in each cell now see the volume is divided into cells we divide it into small cells so when phase points in each cell are specified then a cell may contain so many so many phase points we define a macro state of the system then all phase points in a cell is defined and if you go for a particular point so which particles are in the various cells in that case we have to define a microstate so microstate deal, deal microstate deals with a particular particle in a cell but macrostate all phase points in cell okay particular phase point in cell Uh, is microstate and all phase points in a cell are specified that is called macrostate uh, this is the boltzmann relation boltzmann relation that relates the entropy with thermodynamical probability w with the entropy s and thermodynamic probability w they are connected through boltzmann relation as of course s equal to kb boltzmann's constant ln w okay this is a derivation and from after derivation we find that the entropy and the thermodynamical probability that related with this relation now see ah. okay so in unit this is the basic terminology you have learned in the unit 12 and in unit 13 we learned about the uh, classical statistics in classical statistics we start with thermodynamic probability of distribution in various energy graphs okay the thermodynamic probability of distribu distributing n distinguishable particles into various cells that means you have n distinguishable particles 
they are to put into various cells such that there are n i objects small n i objects in the in the cell in the ith cell and that is given by thermodynamic property w that is n factorial n factor capital n factorial that is the the n factorial h the n distinguishable particles divided by divided by the product sum of n i small n i n i factorial and the n i objects they are to put into i th cell out of n distinguishable particles that n i factorial <coughs> so what is most probable state now to determine the most probable state we maximize ln w by ln w because w is very large uh, very large in number so to determine most probable state we can, we have to maximize ln w and we get the most probable state similarly most probable distribution the most probable distribution of particles among various energy levels you see this is the uh, maxwell uh, maxwell ln formula in the maxwell ln system so the most probable distribution of particles among various energy levels of a maxwell ln system is given by n i equal to 1 by exponential energy is uh, in epsilon i or you, you say e i minus mu divided by k b t here you see e mu is the chemical potential and e i is the energy level i h cell uh, i h cell k b is the boltzmann constant t is the absolute temperature so the most probable distribution of a particle of particles among various energy levels so why ni what ni this is the objects that is in the ith cell and they are having energy ei ei that is how the most probable distribution then single particle partition function a single particle partition function for a system of n distributed particles distributed in degenerate levels that is given by exponential i equal to 1 to i equal to 1 to n exponential minus beta ei where beta is the lagrange multiplier and that comes out to be 1 by beta equal to 1 by kbt 1 by kbt so this is exponential minus e by ei by kbt this is the partition function now to 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 uh, uh, we learn about the partition because, function because to de define or to determine the different thermodynamical parameters so to determine thermodynamical parameters find here is a partition function that will help us in determining the thermodynamical parameters now see degeneracy parameter the degeneracy part of parameter a which is n by z so in i'm um, going to total number of distinguishable object now z is the partition function so ratio of n and z that will give you the degenerate parameter and that is that comes out to be exponential mu by k b t okay now see how the thermodynamic parameters you see u a that means use the internal energy f is the uh, um, s is the entropy here is the pressure and f, f is the helmholtz free energy and all these parameters a are connected to the partition function z so for an a non degenerate thermodynamical system then the system cannot be repeated non degenerate means it cannot be generated again so non degenerate thermodynamical system 
made up of n identical non interacting particles now the system is made up of n identical and non interacting particles they are identical but they do not interact with each other they are enclosed in volume v in that case the thermodynamic parameters are related to j by this relations so only you have to write the internal energy u n k v t square del by del t l n z similarly the entropy n k v l l n z plus u by t and the helmholtz free energy is minus n k v t l n z and the pressure n k v t z and del z by del v t then partition function of an ideal monoatomic gas okay the partition function of an ideal monoatomic gas made up of n identical particles this is given by zn that is contained in the volume v otherwise v is a zn equal to v to the power n s to the power 3n 2 pi mkbt to the 3n by 2 your h that is the phase space volume h to the power 3 hq small hq is the phase space volume Uh, the internal energy u that is equal to 3 by 2 nrt and heat capacity cv it is specific heat capacity at constant volume that is 3 by 2 nr and the entropy of an ideal monoatomic gas that is equal to nkb ln v 2 pi mkbt by h to the power 3 by 2 e to the power 3 by 2 okay so these are the formula we learn here in the classical statistics now we we'll go for quantum statistics now for uh, for going to quantum statistics so i write many things because it is very uh, difficult to uh, learn the concepts and the idea of this quantum uh, statistics the first question comes why we go for the quantum theory because the in 19th 19th uh, century you see many problems arise which are which are not solved by the classical concept or classical theory and there in that time the people think that classical theory has the limitation of explaining this so we should go for a new theory we should go for or think about the new theory and the book we can say the father of thinking about the the a new theory that is the quantum theory and what are the problems that arise before us which are not solved by the classical theory that the black body radiation and the specific heat of solids at low temperatures photo electric effect atomic spectra so many things uh, are not solved by during that time by classical theory that is why we think for quantum theory now see what is the idea of the classical variation from the uh, quantum the very simple difference in classical theory we think that change of the physical quantity is continuous but in quantum we think that is the discrete this is the very simple difference 
starts from this idea and other things are there so when things are you say continuous you can find any value but when it is discrete we cannot find every value so this is distributed in small bundles or packets that is the quantum thinking so now see spectral distribution of black body radiation and temperature difference of the specific heat at constant volume of solids particularly at low temperatures that are not explained on the basis of classical theory not only these two with these two right um, other things are there spectral uh, you see atomic spectra to know about the hydrogen spectra this hydrogen spectra consists of the discrete spectral lines that is series lyman series bomber series this is not continuous the spectra arises because of transition of electron from different energy levels that means energy levels of atoms may not are not continuous if had they continuous we would have been find the continuous spectra so continuous discrete spectra implies that the energy levels of electrons in an atom they are not continuous now see, the spectral energy density of a black body radiation was explained by planck by postulating that exchange of energy between matter and radiation could take place only in bundles this is the basic difference starts as the exchange of energy the reason incident on the matter when you exchange a metal expose a metal surface to the uh, solar radiation you find after some time this uh, the metal surface gets heated where do we get uh, where do we get energy from this one how this energy is given to the metal this is not given continuously that is given in bundles of a certain minimum quantity of energy that is called quantum of energy quantum means at a fixed value and that say the uh, that is why the name is the quantum theory so the energy exchange between radiation and matter that take place in bundles of certain minimum quantity of energy and the quantum of exchange was directly proportional to its frequency that is the bundle of energy or the packet of energy contained in the packet the energy contained in the packet that is proportional to it's the frequency of radiation so if the frequency of radiation is high the bundle contains more energy if the frequency is low then bundle contains small energy right so similarly the specific of solids the specific heat of solids that depends upon the temperature specifically the classical theory doesn't explain why this the variation of specific heat of the solids with temperature at low temperature level. and that was explained by einstein and debye successfully by assuming that the vibrational energy was quantized that means the vibrational energy that the energy is tra tra transferred from one point to another portion of the solid say the energy that is quantized is not transferred in continuous way that is transferred in bundles of minimum or packet of energy or quantum of energy similarly to understand the behavior of conduction electron in metals and the concept of zero point energy 
So conduction electrons means electrons which are taking part in the conduction of current. Free electrons we say. Because unless the electrons are free, how can they move? Unless they move, how can they give rise to the current? So current is the rate of flow of the charge. Charge means charge carrier. Which one is the char charge? Uh, charge carrier. Electron is the charge carrier in the solid conductor say, or metals. So the free electrons, the concept of zero point energy. You can say the, the energy of the electron is zero point. Zero point energy doesn't mean it is zero. So the minimum energy that is that uh, 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 that contained by our minimum energy is possible for an electron is not is not zero. This is okay. That is the minimum energy is called zero point energy. So the concept of zero point energy uh, and to study the behavior of conduction electrons. Then we have to research to quantum statistics and in quantum statistics we will deal with the two type system that is Bose-Einstein or B system and Fermi-Dirac or FD system. Right. So quantum stat statistics will deal with two types of systems. Now see simultaneous determination of position and momentum of a particle that cannot be ac accomplished to infinite precision. That is the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So Heisenberg's uncertainty principle says you cannot simultaneously determine the position and momentum of a particle with infinite precision. Infinite precision means with accuracy. You cannot measure it simultaneously. If you say that I exactly measure the position, there is no uncertainty in position of, of, of the particle, then you cannot measure the momentum correctly. If you measure one correctly, then the possibility of correction, uh, the precision in other will be very, very small. So rather we say that is the del q that is the change in position q is a generalized coordinate for the position say del q del p change in momentum the product equal to h del q del p equal to yeah, equal to h Planck's constant here so uh, that may be confusion there is a a, a, a HQ, which I write the volume element. Uh, so that is the volume of a in phase space cannot be arbitrarily arbitrarily small. In fact, smallest volume of a cell should be taken as HQ. That is phase space volume. Phase space, space volume. But we learn the, about the two uh, systems of the quantum statistics. That is Bose-Einstein and Fermi-Dirac. Okay, now see what is the basic feature of quantum statistics? The basic feature is the indistinguishability, indistinguishable of identical particles. So, identical particles, you can say identical particles are indistinguishable. That means you cannot separate one electron from the other in a metal. Suppose the metal, the uh, if conduction, conduction takes place, so many electrons move from the lower potential region to higher potential region. Say, you cannot distinguish which electron is moving in this direction, electrons in, the, in this direction. So that is, you cannot distinguish them. Uh, like you can say, in general case, you can say, uh, uh, the objects are separate, similar. Uh, if you take so many apples, suppose uh, you find uh, the uh, some that it is dissimilarity, some different apples. Okay, but there is no dissimilarity 
in in electrons identical particles so identical particles are indistinguishable hmm. that is why it is difficult to measure them and then we measure them statistically in bulk way so all known particles they can be classified into two categories basing on upon their spins now the particle having integral spin integral spin the spin as a as a, as a unit of h bar h by 2 pi 0 h bar 2 h bar so um, they we pose einstein statistics and the term as bosons so example are photons pions helium etc you see so particles with integral spin 0 1 h bar 2 h bar 3 h bar all are integers now see the number of bosons that is bos bose einstein statistics say the number of bosons that can occupy a given quantum state has no restriction so the you can say the quantum state can be occupied by as many as number of bosons no restriction is there but the restriction is there in case of the fermions okay so fermions obey or the particles with half integral spin so the fermions are with a half integral spin half integral means h bar by 2 then 3 h bar by 2 and 2 h bar 2 h by 2 equal to h bar integral is you. so 3 h bar by 2 5 h bar by 2 okay so h bar by 2 so these are the fermions particles with half integral spin they are the electrons protons neutrons muons uh, okay but number of fermions in quantum state is dependent by pauli exclusion principle okay pauli ex exclusion principle that means with same quantum state the two electrons or two particles they cannot remain in a given quantum state now see any number of bosons can exist in any energy level we had we have uh, already stated for bosons any number of bosons can exist in energy level and the bose einstein distribution function this is given by f v equal to ni by gi equal to 1 by x exponential beta epsilon i minus mu whole minus 1 it is the discrete energy level if the energy is continuous distribution is continuous then ei is replaced by e only similarly fermi dirac distribution function is given by here it is plus 1 simple difference in the here numerator it is minus 1 and it is plus 1 okay now with this the block 4 i think the sun is over then whatever thank you may discuss now okay champa anmute anmute and speak champa am i audible are able to listen me champa hello sir ha ha uday please send me the notes in the whatsapp sir ha pathe da okay thank you sir matte bhi sir mu whatsapp pe send karu cha okay ठीक है, यूसी रेणुका 
Yes, sir. This is very brief. You have to go through the go through the. You have to collect at least study material, and go through because you have to write the expression. You cannot derive here expression. Only one expression is. Okay. You see, on the statistics, we write. We have to show so many things. How the Planck uh, quantum theory is established. For that, Rayleigh's uh, law is given classically. Wien given classically, and partially they explain the experimental uh, curve of the uh, black body, as uh, the energy density of black body radiation or spectral energy density distribution. Spectral energy density distribution means the how the energy changes with respect to the wavelength or frequency. This is the spectral energy distribution graph. Raleigh and Wien failed to explain the complete graph. They they only su succeed explaining the partial or portion of a portion of the graph. The Raleigh is able to low frequency level, and the uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, Wien successful higher frequency level. Huh. So all these things, there's derivation. Okay, I'll send you whatever I prepare for only to uh, only for the class because I have already told you. You, you have to you prepare and discuss which part you want. Hmm. Okay, I'll send you uh, all these things. Double, you, you give me rather email. I will send you. Okay. Uh, it in WhatsApp. Sir, I have sent you the message in WhatsApp. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, I will try. Sir, number 10. Who is number? Who? Sir, WhatsApp number. Come on, Pranka, 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 the WhatsApp number? I guess, sir. Do number is the WhatsApp number? No, say number tonight. No, say my name over here. Nine four three seven six zero double four zero eight. Sir, out.